Hi, my name is Ashlyn Conlon, and I'm here representing the UK Advertising Export Group, or UK AEG as we like to call it for short. Uh, we're delighted to partner with the Phoenix Festival today. As I'm sure you all know, the UK has a long heritage as one of the world's leading hub for advertising and marketing services. And as we now adapt to the impact of COVID-19, UK advertising is very much open for business and continues to work with clients and partners all around the world. UK advertising, with its brilliant combination of strategic, creative, technological and production capabilities will play a crucial role in the recovery for the economy and for brands all around the world. As I'm sure you've seen in the various sessions and stages, we ran a number of presentations today from UK Advertising. And I would like to welcome Ford's Global EV Communications Manager, Emma Burke, who is joining Chrome's Managing Director, Joel Mishkin, to discuss the creative freedom afforded by trusted partnership between brand and production studio. Over to you both. Trusting partnership, hey, Emma. <laughs> this is why I have to live in Detroit and you have to live in London to keep it civil. Completely, yeah. <laughs> Um, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for, for joining us um, today. Uh, we're going to be having a bit of a conversation. We thought it was a nice way to do it, um, seeing as Emma is in Detroit and, and I'm currently in London. Uh, and this is a wonderful way of using technology to bring us together. So thank you very much, Ashling and UKAEG and Phoenix Festival. Uh, this is um, it's a really cool platform to be part of. So, Emma, we, we've been working uh, together for a while. Um, and yeah. yeah, it's been a few years now uh, on on a variety of pretty amazing projects. Um, do you want to do you want to let us know sort of where it all kind of started, um, <clears throat> and how did you end up in Detroit uh, working on Ford's uh, journey to electrification? Yes, it's been quite a journey. So, um, hi everyone, great to have you with us. Um, I'm super excited to be talking to lots of people in lots of different time zones. Um, so I'm now uh, the global communications lead for electric vehicles for Ford. Uh, like Joel said, just outside of Detroit, I've been here for a couple of years now. But really, our journey uh, working with Chrome started in 2016, where I was in a completely different role, looking after communications for the GT um, race program, taking Ford back to Le Mans uh, in 2016, 50 years after we uh, won against Ferrari and took positions one, two and three back then and really were going back in 2016 to try and do the same in the, in the GTE Pro Club. We really had a job in bringing on board our Ford family, really, to, to make it relevant for people. You know, why does Ford go racing? Why does that matter for the guy or girl buying a Mustang or a Fiesta or, or anything else? And um, we had a unique opportunity to craft a story around why Ford is going back. And we worked with Chrome really to get into the heart of what what Ford does in the racing world and why and why we've always done that. And I hope you guys will take the chance to see that film because we think it's something that was really special in terms of really getting people to understand that um, that reasoning and rationale and the emotion behind that. That was an unbelievable deep dive, I think, for us as a production company to to really understand the history and the legacy and the emotional connection that Ford has, um, not only to the kind of the outside world, but also to the sort of 200, 250,000 strong global workforce. And, you know, when you when you get given a brief, you know, emotionalize why Ford go racing. You know, that is a, a pretty unbelievable brief and it allowed us to, to absolutely deep dive into what Ford stands for as a whole, where it all began, where it's going. Um, and, and I think that every project that we've worked on since, and there's been a few different types of projects, and we're going to talk mainly about one project uh, in particular now, um, but every different type of, of project that we've worked on, it, it, it utilises that knowledge. Um, and and I think yeah. it allows and I, us to be able to convey the emotional storytelling that Ford needs because it's worthy of it. That's what yeah. Ford brings to the world. It's it's legacy. It's history. And I think what was so great was that you really got that deep dive into understanding what Ford is as a brand and the people behind it and all the emotion that comes with that. And I think that's why we have such a great partnership in the fact that every project that we work with you you on, you have that understanding and background. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel each time, excuse the pun. So I think, you know, we had a challenge last year 
um, in that Ford was coming to the market with a global electric vehicle. And, you know, I, I don't know how much everybody knows about it, but essentially it's called Mustang Mach-E. It's an SUV. It's all electric. It'll have 300 miles of range. Um, it's going to be amazing. But we also knew that we had a communications challenge in the fact that, you know, Mustang had never been a four door before. It had never been electric before. And we know that a lot of our Mustang fans were like, I, we're not sure that's the right thing to do. And if I'm honest with you, you know, it wasn't an easy decision for the company to make. And I had, you know, lived through a year of that debate. And so the communications challenge was, you know, we really need to attract new people to the brand with electric vehicles, but also ensure that we didn't upset the core, you know, the real, the Mustang community that we know and love. Um, and really that's where this particular video that we want to talk about comes in. Yeah, it was, you know, when I first came on board the project, I, I'm not sure I bought it. You know, I think I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a massive car fan. I'm a Mustang fan. And, you know, for a Mustang not to have the sound of the V8, um, you know, and, and the kind of shape, you know, that to me was, you know, it was, it was worrying. Like, how are we actually going to, how are we going to reveal this car in terms of, you know, communications and visuals and storytelling, you know, when... It, you know, it's missing those sort of vital ingredients to make it a Mustang. And then the amount of time that I spent with this car um, and, and actually the amount of time that I spent with, um, you know, and we as a company spent with the people that are actually crafting it, you very quickly begin to realize that this is actually a, an incredibly special product, that this is taking not only Ford yeah. into the future, but Mustang into the future. And I think that's the point, though, and what one of our viewers, I think it's all Essenbel, like, absolutely, you know, the rumble of the V8, so important. It's not going away. We, you know, we just revealed a new Mark 1. You know, all the V8s will still be there. This is a new addition to the family. So it's really an extension of the brand. It's not, it's not going to be a replacement. And I think that was also our challenge was, you know, how do we get people to understand that we're not taking away anything that you know and love? We're really adding to that family, you know, getting the Mustang community to embrace that, but also opening up the community to people who want a different experience. So I think that's where, you know, we wanted to be very authentic in telling the story of that we also had that doubt, you know, and I think for a brand like Ford to show that vulnerability is a really positive thing in an environment, particularly now, you know, people have so much choice that really these things matter. People want to know that there was some heartache and a battle and, you know, us really ensuring that we had made the right decision, um, but also to explain why it was the right decision, not just to say, you know, this was a sales exercise. It absolutely wasn't that. Um, so, as a, you know, as a communicator, it was such a wonderful opportunity because, you know, you basically have a problem, but you also have a really authentic product and you have a huge army of really passionate people, a lot of them who have worked on Mustangs for years and years. And so um, it was a really exciting thing for us to basically create a story of how this vehicle and the branding came about with the people that were behind it. And that, that video storytelling opportunity was really powerful for us. Yeah, and it all really started. So essentially, this was a, you could call it a making of film. This was a film that really sort of articulated uh, how the project came to be. Um, it, it really kind of focused on um, the challenge around uh, the decision to call it a Mustang. And Emma, we can talk about that a little more. Um, but I think it's, uh, thank you, Stephen, for putting the link up. Where it all really started um, was with Mustang owners. Um, and that's something that we that we really wanted to kind of showcase with this. We wanted to deep dive into, you know, making this feel very real. So we found real Mustang owners. Um, we found their cars from all over the years. Um, and we spent time with them. We interviewed them about what Mustang means. Uh, we took them for drives. You know, these are people that kind of, uh, you know, for the full range of Mustang and it's, you know, 50 year history. Um, and, you know, all different types of people. Um, and it was just the most amazing experience uh, to actually go and spend proper time finding out what these cars actually meant to the lovers. Um, of yeah, and I'm, I'm from England and, you know, Mustang had come to England, I think, in 2015. 
But before that, really, it was very much seen as, you know, an American heritage vehicle. And I, something that's really struck me since being here in the States is, you know, Mustang is like an entire lifestyle. There are people that call their children Shelby. There are, you know, people have tattoos on their backs. You know, it's a it's a really important thing. And so, you know, Ford was very aware of what what we were doing in the fact that, you know, we knew that we were not going to get everyone on board immediately. Um, you know, how do you prove a Mustang is a Mustang until people can drive it? And yet we have, you know, two years of revealing it and um, trying to drum up some uh, excitement around it and ultimately get people to buy it without people driving the vehicle. So that was really our, our challenge as communicators. And, and I think, um, you know, we had this opportunity to create an emotional connection with people. And um, I think the film and, and the fact that we started with Mustang owners was so important in that. We didn't start with, here's a nice shiny object that you can go out and buy. We were really trying to get into the brand story and really understand how people feel about the Mustang experience. The decision to call it a Mustang was, you know, I think a, a quite a controversial one, not only with you know, fans of Mustang, but also, you know, with the people that were making the car, the people, you know, people that work at Ford, Emma, you know, you possibly included, I don't know, at the start, it was, um, it was, it was really, you know, it was really interesting to talk to everybody um, as we did uh, to, you know, who was involved in making this car, you know, everybody from senior level, uh, all the way, you know, up to the people that were designing um, the interiors, the, uh, the the powertrain, um, the the designers. You know, we really we really spoke to everybody, um, and it was. I think the most interesting thing for us is finding that the passion um, for Mustang it lived and breathed in every single one of the people that were making this car. You know, very often um, these were you know, people had grown up with Mustang in their lives, whether their parents drove Mustangs or their grandparents. There was something about that brand that was part of them. And then all of a sudden, these you, know, you have a responsibility to, to, to take the Mustang brand into the future, to do something so drastically different with it. Um, but of course, you weren't just taking one leap forward, were you, Emma? You were taking two leaps forward. You know, for a Mustang to not only become electric, but to also become an SUV at the same time. You know, that was yeah. that was the two giant leaps, I suppose, for the brand, but also two giant leaps for consumers, um, and, you know, having to get their heads around that Mustang really is evolving. Yeah, and arguably, you know, whilst there are obviously lots of people in lots of different places that know a lot about electrification, there are also lots of people that don't. And so... I mean, that's really where we started, which was before you even have a vehicle to show, how do you get people excited about um, electric cars? And, and we also worked with you guys on some content around the testing and, you know, having the prototype um, in really freezing conditions and taking to taking it up north to, the, to, to winter testing. And I think, you know, visually we were, we were able, even without the vehicle, we were able to create a sense of personality for what this car was going to be, just with the power of film in terms of, you know, it, it provides an opportunity to, you know, give a tone, a personality for the car and also the people behind it. Um, and really to showcase our, our people on the project as ambassadors for the program, which I, I think, you know, especially now, that authenticity is so key in ensuring that people know that, that people are passionate about what they do. It was um, it was pretty amazing with this project to actually see the entire sort of stages of the vehicle coming to life. You know, everything from the, the design to the clay models, you know, that are built. This is the clay where they actually sculpt, um, where, where they sculpt the cars to find the shape. Um, you know, everything from you know, uh, just you know the interiors, and you know, Emma, you could add you know more weight to this because you really wanted to you really wanted to do something entirely different with this vehicle. You know, every, from from the fabrics that were used to the um, to the the connectivity, um, the the heads up display, or the um, you know, the center console. Yeah, and I think I think that was the other thing was you know how did we um, differentiate ourselves from every other uh, battery electric vehicle out there? You know. 
traditionally they haven't been known to be particularly emotional products they've been very technologically advanced you know everything is silver and gray and blue and something that we really felt that we could do with an electric mustang was to bring passion to the vehicle you know people don't buy cars you know generally because of functionality alone they really it's about who they are and how does it make them feel and you know i don't know about you but you know my husband drives a truck right now and you know he loves it i love it you know we have a v8 mustang as well but at the moment you know my kids are, my daughter is nearly 10 and her legs are longer than mine and, and it's not a great space for her anymore but i don't want to go and drive a, a minivan just because I'm a mother with two children and so I you know this vehicle is perfect for someone like me who's you know ultimately a real gearhead but wants the flexibility of space and you know my husband still wants to put his bike in the back so it it's a different it's a different thing but it's it, we talk about it Mustang really being an experience rather than being a body shape or, or, or an engine. So yeah, I'm super excited about Let's it. Let's talk about some of the technology as well that was used to actually bring the car to life. So there's an image here, um, if you can see, of you know of, uh, of, uh, of using virtual reality to help the sort of engineers, um, you know, really kind of understand how the car was going to sound, how it was going to look, how it was going to drive. Um, the the testing transcended not only from sort of winter testing and high altitude testing, but you know, really complex kind of simulator testing as well. Yeah, and I think there's a really interesting point that um, in the film itself, we have what, the engineering director for the car being really honest about the fact that he went to the simulator where we do a lot of our racing testing um, to experience um, the car in the early um, months of development. And, you know, I think, um, you know, he was very blunt about the fact that he got out and he was like, guys, this is not a Mustang. Um, and I think for a company like Ford to basically say, you know, it wasn't like a smooth ride of development. Like we did have points where we had to say, you know, we can't do this if the vehicle isn't up to it. Um, and, you know, he had to go back, you know, he, he sent the, the team off to, you know, create something better. And they totally did that. And within five weeks, he was back at the sim and he was able to get out of the, the simulator and say, you, you've done it, you know. And I think um, to tell that story in the way that he did and to show the testing at the vehicle, you know, it's it's very authentic. And, I, you know, I said that before, but I think it's, you know, how do you create a connection with a brand? It's really through the people and feeling that they're authentic to what they are delivering. So that's why I think this film particularly was so successful. I mean, it had a viewing rate of about 30, 31 percent for a 20 minute film, which I'm told it's super high. If you think um, about that, that's on YouTube. So so essentially one in three people watched a 20 minute film from start to finish, which is which is you know very, very rare um, at that length of film, especially with YouTube. So it's uh, it shows that there's a real appetite for for I think this kind of really sort of truthful, emotional um, storytelling from brands. That's something that, that I think we as a production company are, are very much seeing as an emerging trend. Um, is that you know we, we we people don't necessarily want to have things sort of forced down them and um, forced down their throats in 30 second um, hits. You know I think that people really like the fact that you know with content and how it's evolving and how also almost you know marketing content which is you know generally more kind of impact led uh, is merging with communications which is more story led. Now through technology you know we're able to bring incredibly high production value um and almost you know commercial-esque storytelling um to you know emotional truth-based uh storytelling yeah absolutely and i think you know we've done a lot of you know our campaign was very integrated you know we revealed the car in la last year um very close to one of our big competitors and, um, you know, it was a really exciting time because for the first time we had, you know, 700 people in the room made up of dealers, employees and media all at the same time. Um, and uh, we revealed the car in partnership with um, we did a Twitter live campaign. You know, we reached almost two billion people um, working with Idris Elba, which was amazing um, to have. You know, he himself worked at Ford in Dagenham. Uh, back in the 80s and his father also um so with that authenticity again 
you know, I think really helped us with this um, vehicle reveal. And, you know, since then, the, the media reach has been phenomenal. I think we've reached three and a half billion people now with the storytelling afterwards. And a lot of that has come from the original film that was made, because, of course, all the interviews that the guys did, we didn't script it. So we really did informal interviews to get behind and understand what people felt about the vehicle and their work. Um, so we're able to then craft the story afterwards, um, a luxury that sometimes you don't have due to time um, and you end up scripting something. But I think the result uh, doing it this way was, was um, you know, providing a uh, a personality behind everybody. Um, so yeah, we, we announced it that night. It was incredible. We worked with the Detroit Youth Choir as well, um, which was super exciting that they're, they're really thriving at the moment, um, despite everything that's going on. And um, we then showed, um, we invited a group of Mustang owners to Fox Studios just down the road in LA um, and we showed the film, this 20 minute documentary to the Mustang owners with a lot of the team that had been on the program. And it was very interesting because we were, you know, I can remember having a drink on the lawn beforehand. I mean, it, at Fox Studios, I mean, what dreams are made of, I'd never been. And talking to people and they were really not convinced, you know, they were like, what are you doing to the brand? Why would you do that? This is crazy. Or, you know, this is, you know, this is not what you should be doing. Um, and after watching the film, you know, I spoke to various people, the same people that I'd spoken to before, and they were like, I had no idea. You totally get it. You understand what Mustang is all about. You know, you're not just a, a group of corporate people that don't understand it. So, you know, are we there yet? No, of course, there's more work to be done. And I think when people get the opportunity to get into the car, you know, that will um, definitely uh, change people's minds, I think. Um, but I mean, what an amazing communications challenge for us. I, I think it, it was a really exciting journey. Absolutely. So I'm conscious of time um, and uh, and just thought that it might be worth throwing some, uh, seeing if anybody has any questions they'd like to throw out to myself or Emma. Yeah, so, or just um, it, the, the um, Mustang mach -E is absolutely coming to Europe. Um, and um, it will arrive at the beginning of next year. Um, they'll, you can reserve the vehicle now uh, and order, order banks will open relatively soon in different markets. It's incredible. It really is. It's, um, you know, Mustang stands for, for freedom, uh, love of the open road, fast, fun, affordable is what they say. I mean, this, if, you look at, uh, if, if you look at the other products that are out there, um, you know, for me, I think Mustang has the heart. It has the heart and soul. You know, some others have the luxury and some others, you know, have, have technology. But for me, Mustang has it all. It's uh, it's it's the, the Mackie, you know, really is a fusion of, of a car that is packed full of technology and it looks beautiful. It drives incredibly. You know, what's the acceleration on the, um, it's three and a half. Yeah, so on the GT version, it will be around the mid three second, not to 60 you range. Can me up so for that one, Emma. When yeah, it it'll go quick. There's a question from Stephen Parker. Emma, it's one for you. Yes, yeah, so that's a really interesting question. So Stephen is asking about has this um, or will this be changing the way that we communicate with Ford or Mustang going forward? I mean, it's really interesting. So, you know, we obviously are um, really into data and are we achieving our objectives when we put out a film or um tell a story and you know what is it that we are trying to really achieve with any of those communications it absolutely you know film um storytelling and particularly now in this COVID-19 environment in many ways a traditional event will maybe never be the same you know the video content that lives and supports that is now the the primary um way of reaching our consumers and so it's never been more important as an avenue to um, create an emotional connection with people. So, yes, I think we learned a lot from the Mackie experience to know that it's an engaging way to get to people. But I think even more so now, I mean, I think some the, the social team told me yesterday that we've had 15,000 extra views of the film just in the last six weeks. And this is six months after the car got revealed. So, you know, there's no money behind it. That's just social, socially, people are 
going onto YouTube looking for great content and then they're, they're watching it and staying on it and engaging with the content. So we know that it's working. Well, I suppose another um, thing that's interesting is, you know, this is a 20 minute documentary. It's uh, it's it can very easily be a 60 minute or a, or a feature length, you know, 90 minute film. Um, it's it's a it's almost like a new style of filmmaking um, that that we're doing um, quite a lot of now, which is almost finding a way of condensing you know a, a film that would usually be a lot longer into a, a much shorter space of time, um, without it feeling overwhelming. So you know, in some ways, it feels like a, a commercial. In some ways, it, it's very much a documentary. Um, it's almost a fusion of lots of different things. You know, short even a short film you could throw in there as well. And I think all the content that you created as part of that, you know, we've been able to cut and shut for every platform available. So, you know, uh, all the social media channels that can feed into that, you know, it's been a, a pretty cost effective way of creating great, great content. Amazing. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, it's uh, for really very, very grateful that you've taken the time to, to join us and uh, I hope you enjoy the films that we've shared and um yeah, thank you very much. Stay thank safe. you, Emma. Thank you, Joel. Take care. Talk Bye. soon. Bye.